A beam splitter is an optical device that splits a beam of light in two. It is the crucial part of most interferometers. Beam splitter designs, in its most common form, a cube. It is made from two triangular glass prisms which are glued together at their base using polyester, epoxy, or urethane-based adhesives. The thickness of the resin layer is adjusted such that half of the light incident through one port is reflected and the other half is transmitted due to frustrated total internal reflection. Polarizing beam splitters, such as the Willaston prism, use birefringent materials, splitting light into beams of differing polarization. Another design is the use of a half-silvered mirror, a sheet of glass or plastic with a transparently thin coating of metal, now usually aluminium deposited from aluminium vapor. The thickness of the deposit is controlled so that part of the light which is incident at a 45 degree angle and not absorbed by the coating is transmitted, and the remainder is reflected. A very thin half-silvered mirror used in photography is often called a pellicle mirror. To reduce loss of light due to absorption by the reflective coating, so-called Swiss cheese beam splitter mirrors have been used. Originally, these were sheets of highly polished metal perforated with holes to obtain the desired ratio of reflection to transmission. Later, metal was sputtered onto glass so as to form a discontinuous coating, or small areas of a continuous coating were removed by chemical or mechanical action to produce a very literally half-silvered surface. Instead of a metallic coating, a dichroic optical coating may be used. Depending on its characteristics, the ratio of reflection to transmission will vary as a function of the wavelength of the incident light. Dichroic mirrors are used in some ellipsoidal reflector spotlights to split off unwanted infrared radiation, and as output couplers in laser construction. A third version of the beam splitter is a dichroic mirrored prism assembly which uses dichroic optical coatings to divide an incoming light beam into a number of spectrally distinct output beams. Such a device was used in three pickup tube color television cameras and the three strip Technicolor movie camera. It is currently used in modern three CCD cameras. An optically similar system is used in reverse as a beam combiner in three LCD projectors in which light from three separate monochrome LCD displays is combined into a single full-color image for projection. Beam splitters with single-mode fiber for PON networks use the single-mode behavior to split the beam. The splitter is done by physically splicing two fibers together as an X, arrangements of mirrors or prisms used as camera attachments to photograph stereoscopic image pairs with one lens and one exposure are sometimes called beam splitters, but that is a misnomer as they are effectively a pair of periscopes redirecting rays of light which are already non-coincident. In some very uncommon attachments for stereoscopic photography, mirrors or prism blocks similar to beam splitters perform the opposite function, superimposing views of the subject from two different perspectives through color filters to allow the direct production of an anaglyph 3D image, or through rapidly alternating shutters to record sequential field 3D video. Phase shift. A beam splitter that consists of a glass plate with a reflective dielectric coating on one side gives a phase shift of zero or I euro, depending on the side from which it is incident. Transmitted waves have no phase shift. Reflected waves entering from the reflective side are phase shifted by I euro, whereas reflected waves entering from the glass side have no phase shift. This is due to the Fresnel equations according to which reflection causes a phase shift only when light passing through a material of low refractive index is reflected at a material of high refractive index. This is the case in the transition of air to reflector, but not from glass to reflector. This does not apply to partial reflection by conductive coatings, where other phase shifts occur in all paths. Classical lossless beam splitter we consider a classical lossless beam splitter with electric fields incident at both its inputs. The two output fields EC and ED are linearly related to the inputs through. Where the two are, two element is the beam splitter matrix. R and T are the reflectance and transmittance along a particular path through the beam splitter, that path being indicated by the subscripts. Assuming the beam splitter removes no energy from the light beams, the total output energy can be equated with the total input energy, reading. Requiring this energy conservation brings about the relationships between reflectance and transmittance. 
and where indicates the complex conjugate. Expanding, we can write each R and T as a complex number having an amplitude and phase factor. For instance, the phase factor accounts for possible shifts in phase of a beam as it reflects or transmits at that surface. We then obtain. Further simplifying we obtain the relationship. Which is true when and the exponential term reduces to minus 1. Applying this new condition and squaring both sides, we obtain. Where substitutions of the form were made. This leads us to the result. And similarly. It follows that. Now that the constraints describing a lossless beam splitter have been determined, we can rewrite our initial expression as using experiments, several experiments in quantum theory and relativity theory and other fields of physics use beam splitters. These include, the FISO experiment of 1851 to measure the speeds of light in water, the Michelson-Morley experiment of 1887 to measure the effect of the luminiferous ether on the speed of light, the Hammer experiment of 1935 to refute Dayton Miller's claim of a positive result from repetitions of the Michelson Morley experiment. The Kennedy Thorndike experiment of 1932 to test the independence of the speed of light and the velocity of the measuring apparatus, Bell test experiments to demonstrate consequences of quantum entanglement and exclude local hidden variable theories, Wheeler's delay choice experiment of 1978, 1984, etc a series of thought experiments in quantum mechanics to test what makes a photon behave as a wave or a particle and when it happens, the Felix experiment to test the Penrose interpretation that quantum superposition depends on space-time curvature, the many uses of the makayuro zinder interferometer in areas such as quantum mechanics and quantum computation. Quantum mechanical description, we consider two single-mode input fields, denoted by the inhalation operators which incident on the two input ports of the beam splitter. The two output fields, denoted by are linearly related to the input field by. In order to obtain the entries of the transformation matrix one must take into account that the commutation relations of the fields hold. As is well known from second quantization, one must make sure that. And. This together with energy conservation yields the following set of constraints. For a dielectric 50-50 beam splitter the reflected and transmitted beams differ in phase by. Assuming the reflected beam suffers a phase shift, the input and output fields are related by. The unitary transformation associated with this transformation is. Using this unitary, one can also write the transforms as. Equals application for quantum computing equals. In 2000 Kneel, Laflamme and Milburn proved that it is possible to create universal quantum computers solely with beam splitters, phase shifters, photodetectors and single photon sources. The states that form a curbit in this protocol are the one photon states of two modes, that is the states 01, and 10, in the occupation number representation of two modes. Using these resources it's possible to implement any single curbit gate and two curbit probabilistic gates. The beam splitter is an essential component in this scheme since it's the only one that creates entanglement between the Fox states. References